amigos, ¿cómo están? Yo soy Javier Mota, como ya escucharon aquí en Autos 060, Cristina Radio Network, y estamos aquí en una nueva edición de su show favorito de autos. Y eh, vamos a tener eh, varias eh, cosas muy interesantes para ofrecerles en este día. Una de ellas es para hablar sobre la terapia a la hora de comprar un auto nuevo. Eh, vamos a hablar en unos minutos con el señor Philip Brick de Edmunds.com, que ya está ahí en la línea. Nos vamos a esperar un segundo. Y eh, vamos a hablar también sobre los test drive que hicimos recientemente en Puerto Rico con el Mini Paceman y el Mini Cooper GT, dos autos espectaculares. Vamos también a hablar un poco sobre... Eh, la nueva temporada de la NASCAR, la nueva generación de autos eh, número 6 de la NASCAR, eh, autos eh, de la Ford, de la Chevrolet y la Toyota. Y vamos a hablar en eso y en los últimos dos segmentos del show. Así que ahora vamos a cambiar al inglés inmediatamente. We're switching back to English. Uh, we were talking about the introduction of the show. And we have a uh, senior advice editor, Philip Reed from Edmunds.com. How are you, Philip? I'm very good. How are you, Javier? Thank you very much for uh, for taking time to talk uh, with us uh, about this uh, pretty, pretty, I mean, that it's very catching when you see car therapy shopping, so that, that, that caught my attention a lot, so um, it's very, it's a very stressful process, so I think it's a, it's a very good and uh, very useful from Edmunds.com and you to come up with this idea. So what can you tell us about this thing? Uh, you have three main steps, right? Uh, that's right. There's probably a few more than that, but those are the main points. But yeah, this article that I wrote came about because I was helping both of my brother and uh, another friend uh, who was a woman, and uh, they both had very different shopping styles, but the common part of it was that they were both stuck. In other words, they had reached a point and couldn't decide what to do. So that was why they called, the ther they called me the therapist. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I actually recently read that um, most... Um consumers nowadays with internet and all the services that are around, they visit about 18 uh, web pages. It might be from manufacturers, from uh, the media, from Edmunds.com and other services like that. When they're doing the process, and that's like an overwhelming amount of, of information, sometimes it can be confusing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you used a key word there, which is overwhelming. And very often people are overwhelmed by the process. Uh, You know, they want to buy a car, uh, they don't want to make a bad decision, that's a big part of the problem. Uh, there's quite a bit of fear, and like any big decision, they don't know where to turn next. So the concept of the therapist is nice because, um, you know, there's all kinds of information, as you pointed out, there's all kinds of web pages and things that people can visit, but sometimes it's nice just to go to uh, a human being and say, Well, what do you think? You know, what do you think I should buy? And uh, that's kind of where I came in in that particular case. Yeah, I actually test drive a lot of cars also, and the, a lot of people ask me about that. And it's a very difficult uh, question to answer because, I mean, the first thing is, what's the budget? <laughs> I, I can barely, uh, it's very easy for me to spend your money, but I don't think you will probably like it, right? That's, we're sure, yeah, you know, you're in the same position as me. Your friends and your family are always coming to you. How do I buy a car? Which car should I buy? Very often people come up and say, what's your favorite car? And, um, you know, for it, it may be kind of irrelevant to them. Yeah, it's a million dollars. My favorite <laughs> car is not going to, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's a Bugatti. You know, exactly. But, uh, uh, yeah, so anyway, so, yeah, it, it's an interesting process, and I really enjoy doing it. I, I like trying to help people. So going back to your article, uh, the first point that you, you mentioned is there's more than one perfect car. And I guess this is very true because there are not bad cars anymore in the market. And there are many options in, in every price range. Uh, absolutely. And the price range, I, I think, is even broadening. In other words, we're getting uh, cars that are really inexpensive. And some of them are actually pretty darn good. Um, yeah, I mean... Um, The, the thing is, is that uh, reliability used to be one of the huge aspects of selecting a car. People would say, well, I don't want to buy a lemon, or I don't want a car that's going to have a lot of problems. Well, I mean, they haven't completely eliminated problems, but you have several things. I mean, first of all, you have some very comprehensive warranties. So if there is a problem, it's not going to cost you money. But on the other hand, the reliability of cars is nothing short of phenomenal right now. So you may get into a group of cars, like I, I like to tell people, Pick a list of target cars. I think three is a good amount yeah. because it's manageable. But once you have those three, you know, you're down to a very uh, fine line in terms of making a better decision. You know, any one of the three will probably be pretty good. Exactly. And another thing that probably has changed within the past, I would say, five years is that specific brands have uh, made 
huge strides in, in making their cars much better. And in, in that sense, I have to mention the Koreans, Kia and Hyundai, that used to be really bad. I mean, like compared to the rest of the market. And now they're like on the top of the of the market, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, they're, it's one of the top selling cars. Also, the design appeal of the cars are really good. And one of the ways that they turned it around by was by offering a 10 year warranty. So, yes, um, occasionally people will say to us, well, those cars are junk, right? And it's like, well, you know what? The marketplace has changed. Exactly. Um, the opinions, opinions change slowly, but the market changes actually fairly rapidly. Yeah, absolutely. I guess like one of the, of the, hardest thing to fix in a car is its reputation, I would say, right? It's, that's very, very true. Um, and people build their reputation on certain things, like for example, Volvo was known for safety for years, but now all of the cars are getting into the safety business, business so it's a little hard for Volvo to distinguish itself. Yeah, um, and, and being uh, the automotive industry, being the, one of the most regulated here in the U.S., I mean, all of them have to be really, really safe. And uh, in that regard, yeah, you, and the technology has also advanced and more requirements for all the manufacturers. So um, you're saying in your second point, identify what's keeping you from making a decision. I mean, that's very important. I, most likely, I would think it's money. Am I right? Um, um, money, you know, there's a couple of things. Um, style is very, very important. There are certain people, like a women, a lot of women will say, I'll never drive a minivan because I don't like the image of it. Yeah, or a guy will say, well, I, I don't want, you know, such and such a car because it's not masculine. But the problem is here is that very often these things that are stopping people from making a decision are often not very consciously known by the person. Like a lot of people don't want to admit certain things. Like a guy is not going to really want to admit, well, I want to look tough, so I'll buy a big pickup truck. Yeah. They're not going to come right out and say that. But you do need to get in touch with um, certain things. Like if a guy wants to buy a pickup truck, that's okay. Go ahead and get one. Yeah. Uh, like I have a friend who says, I'm never going to be in a sedan. I have to have an SUV because I want to be up above traffic. And it's like, okay, well, if you want to pay for the extra gas and all that stuff, that's fine. You know, that's your decision. Yeah. Uh, but... The point is to get in touch with whatever it is. Exactly. And uh, you have to take the cars for what they are. I think, uh, for example, one of the, of the examples that I always point out is uh, the Hummer. When it, when it was out there, it was uh, the worst timing for that vehicle because Toyota was coming up with the Prius and then GM was coming up with this huge car that was originally made from the military and has adapted for civil life. And like, that's what it was. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong. I don't think, I have never heard anybody complain about a V12 engine in a Rolls Royce, but they were criticizing the Hummer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, that was really bad timing. Of course, the Hummer's no longer with us now, too, so that the marketplace kind of uh, got rid of that car on its own. Yeah, but I mean, my point in, in here is like, you have to take the car for what it is. And as you were saying, a pickup truck is gonna cost you more, you're gonna spend more money on gas, but if that's what you want, like, go ahead and do it, right? Yeah, well, one of the things I do as a therapist, and I put therapist in quote, is... Well, it's, help, it's helping me, it's helping me, I tell, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't try to tell people what to buy. You know, it's like the cliche of the psychiatrist, you know, people will say, well, doctor, do you think I'm crazy? And the doctor says, well, what do you think? You know? <laughs> exactly. They're never going to express an opinion. Okay, but uh, on your third point, which is very, very practical about the test drive, I think everybody has to learn how to do one because probably the salesman wants to do it fast and maybe because time is money for him uh, or she. And uh, so you, what's the, the key points to have a successful test drive while buying a new car? Yeah, well, uh, a lot of people are afraid of the test drive. Um, they're afraid of the car dealership, let's face it. Um, there's a new way to enter a car um, dealership these days, and that is, and I told this to Barbara, the woman that I was working with. Uh, you know, she said, I really like the Mini, but I don't know whether to buy it or not. And I said, how did you like it on the test drive? She said, well, I haven't driven it yet. <laughs> so I said, well, what are we talking about? You know? Exactly. Um, so I, I, I said, call the Internet Department and schedule an appointment. They'll have the car pulled out ready for you. You can even tell them on the phone, I'm not buying today, but I'll definitely give you my business if I decide that this is the car for me. So, you know, it's a quick and easy way to get in and out of dealerships without having to deal with the conventional salesperson who's going to try to get you into the sales office immediately after the test drive. And really, you know, the car salesmen say the feel of the wheel will seal the deal. 
<laughs> but it will also seal the deal for the consumer, too, who's trying to sort out, do I want this car, this car, car number one, two, or three? Well, you know, the answer is drive them all exactly. and see which one you like. <laughs> So uh, it's very interesting and very useful, Felix. So thank you very much for that. We're uh, about like two minutes away from the, from the break here. Can you please uh, tell us in, in like one minute about Edmunds.com and where can our audience can find more information about uh, all the services that you provide? Edmunds.com we like to think of as a one-stop for car shoppers because we have uh, vehicle reviews. Most importantly, we have vehicle pricing. We have our true market value pricing which is based on statistics of actual transactions and dealerships. So uh, everything for car ownership is covered on Edmunds.com. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time and um, um, also for being responsible. You told me you were driving and you pulled out and uh, you you were talking on the phone <laughs> on the side being safe. So that's another good advice from you. Yes. Thank you very much for your time. I wanted, okay. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Hope to talk to you again soon. Sir, excellent. Thank you very much. Pues ahí tienen una información muy valiosa, espero que les haya servido tanto como a mí, porque a mí también me preguntan mucho qué auto comprar, y francamente para mí, y como les decía Philip, es muy fácil gastarme el dinero de otros y sin, <ríe> sin tener que preocuparme. Eh, las respuestas cortas, digamos, eh, hay muchos autos muy buenos, muchas variedades de modelos, de rangos de precios, no hay real, en realidad autos malos ya en el mercado cuando se está hablando de comprar un auto nuevo, eh, prácticamente las garantías ahora de 5 y de 10 años son cosas comunes, así que bueno, aprovechen eh, sitios de, de información como edmunds.com donde pueden encontrar toda esa información, aunque esté en inglés, va, hay muy valiosa, porque los, la información muy valiosa porque son números, eh, las cifras, el millaje, los precios, todo eso. Así que bueno, ahí tienen, eh, agradecemos otra vez a Philip Reed de edmunds.com por la entrevista. Y no se vayan que cuando regresemos vamos a hacer, hablando de test drives, eh, recientemente estuvimos en Puerto Rico probando los nuevos modelos de la Mini, dos modelos nuevos, uno es el Mini Paceman, que es el séptimo modelo de esta marca inglesa manejada por el consorcio alemán BMW, que desde que regresó a Estados Unidos hace 11 años, con un modelo ahora ya tiene 7, y es el Mini Paceman 2013, y también tuvimos la oportunidad de manejar el nuevo Mini Cooper GT, una edición especial, 2000 modelos, 2000 unidades, 500 solo para Estados Unidos. Ya regresamos, esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota.